So with that kind of introduction, I'll give you just a quick background. Uh, I had my own uh, Coulter experience. So 89 to 1994, you would have seen me in New Meadows, Idaho as the district ranger. My boundaries were from the Snake River on the west to the Salmon River on the north to Brundage on the east and Council to the south. Some of the most incredible landscapes in all of Idaho. And I had the privilege of managing landscapes when we wanted to reintroduce wolves, when we got the endangered species of the salmon, when cattle and sheep were being told to leave the landscape and loggers were told we don't need you anymore. The shift in the economy was pretty significant and those of us who were managing that found ourselves living in a very interesting and chaotic world. So uh, one could say I left Idaho on a rail <laughs> and I came back in a period of time when I can make a choice about being here. Somebody said, why did you come back to Idaho? I said, I came back to Idaho because it was Idaho. Truly, that is the reason why I came back. And since that period of time, Matt was right. I end up down in Utah, and I bump into two guys, one guy by the name of Alistair Coburn and the other guy by the name of Jim Highsmith, literally in a coffee shop. And only in the Intermountain West can this really happen, and it definitely happens right here, where we were talking about the future of and just name the subject. And they were very, very interested in talking about software development. And I said, well, what's the, what's the compelling reason for your excitement? They said, well, we just came back from this incredible conversation where 17 people got together at Snowbird Resort. Now, this is February of 2001 when the event happened. I was meeting them in March of 2001 in this coffee shop. And they said 17 people got together and they were talking about how to build software differently. And I said, Software. I mean, really, I wrote Fortran and I created an infinite loop and I said, no, <laughs> not going to do that. <laughs> so what's the deal? What's really important about writing software? And they said, well, if you get the people who are going to use it, talking with the people who are going to build it, and you do that incrementally through time, you actually get something people will w use. And that's rocket science? Oh. Well, tell me something more that I didn't know. And they said, well, then what we do is we get the people who are testing the stuff to work with the people who are writing it and the people who need it right at the very beginning. And I went, huh, that's rocket science? Huh. Well, guess what? We used to do those same very things out in the wildland firefighting world. Do you think we ever sent the firefighting teams out to fight fire without knowing what they're doing? to give them practice before going out so that they're doing it safely and having the real intent of not only bringing them home safe but getting something done. That's what we did in wildland firefighting and in all wildland management. And what's really fascinating, and Matt w presented the interesting shift from being a forester into high-tech consulting, but in all reality, it's about good leadership and good management and about bringing everybody together to do the thing, whether it's putting out the wildfire or building software. Now I go around to execs all around the country and I say, you know how to start the fire. Rarely do you know which ones to start, and I'll guarantee you, you have a real hard problem putting them out. The agile world, the agile world called agile software development, is an experience. It's a relationship between people who are building the answer to a problem or opportunity and those who have the technical expertise to be in help in that solution making. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to offer some things that say this is what Agile is. And if you are already, now let me get a show of hands. Do you work for a company, raise your hand, who you would say is Agile? Raise your hand. Okay, so there's, there's some people in here. 2011, this summer, August, will be the celebration of the Agile Manifesto. And let me see if I can get to that, yep. Um, the only thing you can actually point to that is Agile is a four-line statement that was written 2001 by these 17 people. Everything else, whether it's Scrum, or whether it's extreme programming, or whether it's uh, feature-driven design, anything that you've heard is agile, the 
only thing that you can have that the world points to to say is agile are these four lines. We are uncovering better ways of developing software by doing it and helping others do it. Through this work, we have come to value individuals and interactions over processes and tools. Does that mean that the tools and processes aren't important? No. It, what it means is let's look at the individuals and the interactions and then find the right processes and tools, whether they're open source or otherwise. It doesn't say that. But. Another thing we value is that the thing we build is workable, working software over comprehensive documentation. Does that mean we don't need documentation? Heavens no. But all we need is documentation sufficient for the thing that works, not to defend ourselves. <coughs> that we value customer collaboration over contract negotiation. Now, does that mean we don't need contracts? We heard Brad say absolutely you need contracts. But they are not the things that drive the solution process. The customer need and the product side of the house is. It's a really critical issue if you're going to say you're agile. And that we respond to change over following a plan. Imagine a group of firefighters who go out to fight a wildfire and they're given a plan in the morning and they get out on the hillside and they fight the fire given the plan that they had in the morning. If they only go by the plan, it's very likely they will be consumed by the fire or not even get near it. So you have to be able to have a plan and respond to the plan as you go. So we value the things on the left over the things on the right. It does not mean the things on the right are not important. This is agile. If you are going to call yourself agile, these are the things you value and you put a lot of expertise and energy into. What I find interesting is, and you'll see the practices in just a minute, is we get lost in whether someone is doing the practice versus being in collaboration. I find in coaching executives, whether it's in my role as the Vistage Chair where we get chief executives in a highly confidential setting and have them talk about their messy business problems, or I'm out in the field working with project managers who are trying to become agile that this is the problem, spoken from an anecdote of a dear friend. Here's the anecdote. He was having problems in his marriage. And he said, you know, I just don't get it. I go home at night, and my wife says, sit with me next to the fireplace and just be. And he says, wringing his hands, I don't know what to do in the being. <laughs> I don't know what to do in the being. So what do you do when somebody says be collaborative? So I'm going to walk you through the practices of Agile, which in my mind, you have to be doing these things. And I'm going to talk with you about the behaviors that go along with being a collaborative leader. So we're going to mesh both of those things in very quickly. The Agile business goals. Basically, you can get to faster, better, and cheaper. However, if what you want is faster, better, cheaper working software, you're going to run into problems, whether they're in licensing for your code or for testing or anything else. But basically what you're looking for is a faster, better, cheaper way of building the solution than what you had to begin with. The game of software gossip. This is the fairly traditional way of developing software where you have a customer talking to an analyst who writes a BRD, the business requirements document. The designer or architect takes a business requirement document and creates a systems requirement document or the technical architecture, gives that to the developer. The developer transfers the BRD and the SRD into code and all of that goes to the tester. Now, this is a forester talking, okay? So if I can get this, anybody can get this. This is traditional way of developing software. The idea is once it gets past the tester, it's gonna go to production and out into the world to be sold. How many of you all have followed this pathway and it's 100% successful? Okay, some of you have done it and maybe even been successful in some ways. It's, it's hard to make this successful from the, the research that we've done. 
what do you do? You change the game. And it's, it's one, one game called gossip. Has anybody played the game of gossip fire, you know, around fireplaces, right? So what's the one rule in gossip that you could change that would make a difference in the outcome? Say it out loud. Say it out loud in front of the other people that make a difference, right? So have the right people around the campfire speaking out loud on a regular basis what makes a difference. So folks, if you went away with nothing else, that one game rule, getting your production people, your testing people, your development people, your customers, your architects, whoever's involved, talking on an iterative and incremental basis is the game rule that we're going to be focused on. What is Agile? Looking across the landscape of all different kinds of incremental and iterative processes, these are the four things that I can tell you in general create and define something called Agile. It's an iterative process of doing just enough planning to go forward. Iterative process means some iteration. So if somebody says, well, we do that every year, no. Shrink that down. At most, you're looking at a six-week iteration. At best, you're looking at one to two-week kinds of iterations. An iterative process of doing just enough planning to go forward, testing across the life cycle, not at the end, and adapting to lessons learned daily, lessons learned daily, so that products can be delivered and deployed frequently. CFOs always want to know, why should we go Agile? And I say, you know what, if we're doing this right, at the end of every iteration, I have something I can ship. Whether we do or not is a question for the business. Well, we have tested it, and it meets the customer acceptance, the unit tests, and the integration tests, and it's ready to be shipped. Therefore, it's ready to be monetized. If you're doing it right, this is a much better way of making money. Second thing. It's a collaborative interaction between the major stakeholders, example, customers, technical team, and management throughout the product design, development, and deployment. Here's key number one. If you have an, a, quote, agile process, and it's only your developers doing it, it is not agile. It is not agile. Let me repeat that again. If your developers are the only ones doing this, your organization is not agile. You need to have at least the product side of your house, the business side, working with the technical side, iteratively and incrementally across the life cycle. This does not mean that they start out at the front end and they give a good story and come in at the back end and say yes or no. It is throughout the life cycle. So if you're going to be agile, folks, let me restate it. You must have the product and business side of the house working with the technical side on a regular basis and most call for daily and hourly and minute, in fact, embedded inside the team. Point number two. Point number three, it's an ongoing alignment and realignment between corporate strategy, project portfolio, and team tasks. Here's how you know whether this is going on or not. Go to, your, go to any developer and say, can you connect the dots from the task you're doing right now to the portfolio of projects that this team, that this organization has, and the strategy that this organization has. is If you cannot, if they do not know that, you're not being agile because they're not building the best business value for you at any one time. It must be business value and the most important business value at any one time. And fourth, do you have a work environment in which operations are highly coordinated and in which people enjoy, enjoy, underline, enjoy the successful outcomes? Do they come to work because it's the best place that they could be during the work day? And they don't call it work, they call it an enjoyable, successful outcome for their life. If you've got those four things going on for you, that, folks, is what's called agile, all right? Anything else, anything less than that, it's something other than. So now we move forward. There are basically seven practices that I like to suggest are important. Now, anybody can talk about practices, so some of these you may want to adhere to and some of you may not. The, uh, the four other points are absolutely critical. The seven fundamental agile practices for me, chartering. 
Now, I'm not talking about long-term kinds of planning cycles. I'm talking about just enough to get started. Just enough to get started. What's the problem or opportunity that we're trying to build? What kind of costs are we looking at in terms of trying to solve and, and support? Who needs to be involved and in what cycle do they need to be involved in? What's the functionality that we're actually building? Are we building an ability for a customer to do something new? If so, what are those ability statements? Uh, there's a parenthetical thing here. Include the customer and the ROI expectations. Here's one of the things I find fascinating in the world of software development. I talk with a lot of software development teams all across the country. I ask, so what's the business value for what you're doing? I don't know. Well, you're building it. You own the actual business value of the firm. You don't know what it is you're building and how successful it needs to be? No? It's a conversation that needs to go on. So on the front end, chartering has to involve all the business as well as the technical uh, pieces. Stakeholder involvement. This is a second practice, and again, I'm going to come back and say, if you are doing this well, congratulations. It is the fundamental construct, and that says when the firefighting team goes out to work, they are going out to work with a whole series of support groups in and around them, and they know that. They're not going out to fight that fire all on their own. And they have people who join the team for special kinds of occasions and leave the team when they're not needed. Who is your customer and your stakeholder? Who is this being given to and using it? Know that answer and involve them from the beginning throughout. The stakeholder involvement is going to be key to the conversation. No matter whether you pay me now or you have to pay me later, the stakeholder involvement is going to be key. Third practice. This one I would just say on a regular basis, collaborate, 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 collaborate. Who are we working with? It can be everybody from legal to uh, other technical. So yes, if you're a developer, you may have to actually work with the architects. They can be your friend. Uh, the product side of the house is really, really knowledgeable. They're not all the snobs you think they are. On the technical side, if you haven't heard the stories about the fact that we can't talk to you, everybody has to find a place at the table and we have to speak out in our own language in a very highly transparent way. That does not mean pick up the phone and call or send an email. That means getting in the same room and having difficult conversations. Iterate. Work in short iterative time boxes, lasting no more than six weeks, and anything around one to two weeks is really good. Now, here's an interesting fact. Agile equals software development? Yes. Agile equals anything that needs a productive environment in which people work together? Yes. We can talk more about that later. Testing. Testing? Imagine this, imagine this. At the end of your development cycle, somebody says, yes, it works, or no, it doesn't work. Ask the question before you start, what are they going to measure? How will they know something's been successful? When you put it out into the marketplace, what problems or opportunities are they actually answering? Those are your tests. Now, most of the time, we wait until the end game to do the test. Stephen Covey offers and the Agile experience expects that you understand the end game before you start. So write your tests before you start developing. If you really get into this, go into test-driven design and literally write the test code before you write the code for operations. Know the end game before you begin. It's all about testing throughout the life cycle and beginning that right at the very beginning. Let me go back. There are three tests. These three tests have to pass every iteration in which you're working. The unit test or the test that you apply to the code that was just written, whether it, it integrates well into the system, otherwise will you break something in the system, 
and does it meet what the customer wanted? I'm going to stop here for a second just to tell you that I was at this point in a very large client. We'll say they were north of the border, and that's all I'm going to tell you. And I was saying something around, this is, this is expectation. Woman raises her hand. She says, you are absolutely crazy. You're probably right. Uh, in what regard? She says, Agile, Agile only builds us faster to hell. Agile only builds us faster to hell. And I said, you know, you're probably right. Tell me how long does it take to test the integration testing? How long does it take to do it? She said, 400 developer hours for every line of code. I'll leave that with you because we're going to come back to it real quickly on, on technical debt. But if you're not doing that, you're going to pay the piper down the road. Uh, prioritize. Uh, Matt gave me a really good example. No, it was uh, Rich gave me a really good example. When he works with Brad Fraser, he says, you know what? I have 20 questions. I have 30 minutes. Here, here's in the priority order all the questions I have. Answer as many as you can in that 30 minutes. That's what prioritization means. Thank you, Rich. <laughs> Is Brad here still? Yeah, does that work for you? All right, thank you. It works in other, it's not just software. Reflect and adapt. This is a key practice. Every, at the end of every iteration, stop, ask the question, how are you doing, what are you going to do to improve? Here are the expectations of an Agile leader. There are two areas. One is in getting things done, and in the other area, working through others to get those things done. Strategically, where are you going? Tactically, how are you getting them done on a daily basis? Innovation. When you hit a problem, how do you respond to it? How do you go around it, above it, below it? When you're working through others, you need to be consensual, you need to be empathetic, and you need to bring excitement into the room. Are you managing technical debt? If you're not, you're going to pay for it. And you need to manage your workshops and your iterations and all of the things that you bring people together around this format. Be purposeful, be inquisitive. Your next agenda should have only questions in them. If you don't, don't bring people together because you bring people together, you want them to be answering questions. If you've got bullet points, those are statements you want to make. Write a memo. Timely, make them as quickly as you can and have a facilitator. I'm not going to go through that. Thank you much. That's the Agile presentation.